Hi there. Recently I came across this old Toshiba laptop for sale near me. So I went down and picked it up and it's an old DOS era laptop which doesn't quite work. So let's see if we can fix it today. Welcome to the basement. Now even though this machine's not turning on, it's in really good cosmetic condition. So I was stoked to get it for 20 bucks on Marketplace. Now there's no signs of any broken plastic. There's some wear and tear, but nothing snapped or broken. So I'm pretty confident with a bit of uh, tweaking or fiddling around, we're gonna get this thing working and it's gonna be an awesome retro gaming laptop. That's the idea. Along the front edge, it's pretty standard. We've got our battery here, which slides out. And we've got here, our three and a half inch floppy drive. On the right hand side, we've got this little slidey port here, and that's for a proprietary mouse or trackball. And in this little hatch, we've got two PS2 ports for a mouse and a keyboard. And there's an array of like slots here, this little hatch, and then a bigger hatch that opens, and then this hatch on the top that opens. Now, I'm not too sure what that means. I think that actually might be where the hard drive goes, so it's like a modular hard drive. Um, and this top one might be for a PC card. Um, it's got like a, an ejector thing there. So I'm not entirely sure if that's what it's for and why it has this extra little, little hatch here. But uh, we'll find out when we pull it apart if there's a hard drive inside, otherwise we have to find something that goes in here. And lastly on this side, we've got a brightness control here for the built-in screen. So on the back of the machine we have what looks like a VGA out and we also have a little slidey piece here which reveals our printer or parallel port and a serial port for a mouse or other device. And on the left side of the machine we have our power in, we have our power button, a reset button and this little slidey thing here that is for releasing the battery now those with keen eyes might have already noticed that there's actually no mouse pointer input built into this machine. We have a keyboard, we have some arrow keys which are laid out in the inverted T and um, we have some function keys across the top, page up, page down, home, etc. on the side here but there's no mouse pointer, there's no like nubbin, there's no trackpad, there's no ball, nothing. So uh, it's definitely a DOS era machine um, where pointers were less important. And of course you can always just plug in an external mouse because of those handy PS2 ports or that proprietary port that was built into the side. So first up, I wanna take the battery out and check there's no corrosion in behind. It's quite a nifty design. You just slide this forward and then you push down in behind it and it pops the battery loose. And there we have it, just slides right out the bottom like that. So here's the battery and it looks pretty good. No signs of corrosion on those terminals. So that is a bonus. And if we have a look inside the body of the machine, you can see there's nothing too bad in there either. It's nice and clean. So the next thing we'll do is I'll connect the power and try and turn it on and I'll show you what it's doing. So we'll just plug it in, give ourselves some power and we'll open it up. And before we go any further, let me tell you about the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. So PCBWay is a great place to get all your PCBs made. They offer all these cool colors, so you can get your PCB looking as good as it works. And they also offer CNC machining and 3D printing. So it's really a one-stop shop. If you wanna design and build anything electronic, you just check out PCBWay and they will make it work for you. They can even assist you with your design and they can assemble and build as well. So big thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring the video today. Okay, so we've got our power connected and we can see here that this light that says DC in is on. So we know that the power supply is working. It's getting power to the machine. But when we push the power button, the power light comes on for a second and then the DC light just sits there flashing. So it's registered some sort of error. Now I've done a bit of Google research and that is telling me that there is something wrong with the power circuit inside the laptop. Um, and apparently it's a common problem with these Toshiba era laptops. The capacitors in the power circuits go bad. And so hopefully that's what's wrong with this one. We can swap out some caps and get this thing booting. So why don't we pull it apart and see if we can fix it. 
Okay, there's a series of screws across the back, so I'm gonna start there and take these out. And there's also a screw underneath, so we'll do that one next. And last of all, there's also a screw inside this little hatch here, so let's pop that off. That's all the screws I can see. Let's see if it'll come apart. It's always very nerve wracking trying to force apart these old plastics because you know they get very brittle with age, but these actually seem pretty good. Of course, now I've said that, I'll probably snap it somewhere. Ah, there we go, look. I broke a little piece off here. It's just the risk you run with these old laptops with the old brittle plastics. It's, um, it really is a lucky dip where you can get it off in one piece, but most of it is done. So we've got our keyboard, which is loose on a ribbon cable. So we'll disconnect that and delve further into the machine. that shield off. That is a challenge. Oh look, there we go, yes. It, it definitely is a 486 SX machine. And we can see here on the hard drive, it says 200 megabytes down here. So it should be a neat little game machine if I can get it working. I'm not sure what kind of screen it's got, probably just a black and white screen. Um, but until we get it going, we won't know. So this area here, this definitely looks like the power circuitry to me. So we'll see if we can get down in there and we'll remove these capacitors, test them and replace them. See if that fixes our issue. So I've pretty much needed to dismantle the entire laptop to get to this piece here. So I'm gonna swap out these larger capacitors here plus these smaller ones next to it. I'm not going to worry about these ones because they're some weird value and my local store didn't have them. So hopefully the issue is with these larger ones. So I'll pull them off the board and we'll find out. Let's do a desoldering, soldering montage. And we're done. So I've replaced all of these ones here. Uh, like I said, I haven't done these ones. Now all the ones I've pulled off None of them tested that far out of spec, so fingers crossed this is actually gonna fix it, but uh, we'll put it back together just to test and turn it on and see what happens. Okay, I've put everything back together enough to test. We've got the screen plugged into the motherboard, which is plugged into that board that we repaired underneath. Uh, plugged in the little beeper speaker. We've got the hard drive connected and we've got the keyboard connected. So the last thing to do is put in some power and our DC connected LEDs just come on. Let's hit the power button and see what happens. Looks like it's working. That's awesome. Now we're gonna get anything. Yep, we're getting something on the screen. Let me zoom in on that. And booting into Windows 3.1. Cool. It is a black and white screen, but uh, it looks really clear. And it doesn't seem to be any damage or any vignetting on there, so that's a good sign. And that's we've booted straight into. Uh, it's pretty quick too. Boot, booted straight into Windows and done pretty quick. So looks like it's all working. Let's get it back together and explore it a bit further. Awesome. Okay, time for a quick clean. So, it's all back together. It's nice and clean and it's working great. So that is a really good result today. Now, I tested all the capacitors that I pulled out of that power circuitry and nothing was wildly out of spec but it must have been enough on one of them just to stop this thing turning on. So that's all fixed, it's turning on, it's happy. Uh, I've connected up a USB mouse and I've had a look around. This particular machine appeared to have belonged to a construction company which was sold off 
around the early 2000s. Uh, I did a quick Google on their name and they're not around anymore. So um, whoever owned this machine must have been a real corporate guy because there's not a single game on here. It's just like work stuff, so boring. Uh, so maybe in a future video we'll get some games on here and see how they play. Uh, the only thing that is making this probably a bad idea for some sort of gaming laptop is the screen is like a passive matrix display which means it just it smears and it's, it's pretty slow to refresh. I had to actually even turn on trails for the mouse otherwise you can't see the mouse when you're moving it around it just disappears when it's moving too fast. Now interestingly as a way of comparison uh, this machine came out around 94 and also in 1994 you could have bought one of these uh, presumably for a lot more money but it just looks like it's from a different planet. This is the PowerBook 540C. Uh, it's one of my favorite laptops. It's the first laptop ever to have a touchpad and it had built-in Ethernet as well. Dual batteries, um, nice color screen. So this really is, it's like night and day and I know which one I would have preferred to pick if I was in the market for a laptop in 1994. But that aside, I'm still quite happy with this old uh, 486 Toshiba. Uh, it's in such good condition, so it'll be a nice addition to the basement, which is where you've been today. Have a great day.